new, 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 new. All right, uh, let's kick it off. Okay, got a couple of revisions. This is a revision for the ESP32 S2 Feather. All these boards got, there's like a bunch of revisions because the battery monitor, speaking of battery monitors, the battery monitor chip that I originally used when I uh, designed these feathers, the LC709203, very, very cool battery monitor, it got discontinued. And so we had to replace it. Um, so these all got respun to use the Max 17048. Uh, and also we did the silk screen and I was added. I think it's much more legible using Penguin. It's otherwise the same. So we're going to update the uh, tutorial for the Max 17048. But I love this new battery monitor. It's basically just as good. Uh, maybe I'll update to the BQ uh, battery monitor because we just covered that. Um, but uh, it's been revised so you can get the new version. And you can see on the back it says... Max 17048 battery monitor. That's how you know which version you have, other than the fact that the silk screen is fancified. Next up. We've also updated the 1.2 inch seven segment LED backpack, featuring the HT16 K33. It's an I2C to LED matrix driver. Um, we have these in a variety of configuration sizes. This is like a massive, chonky 1.2 inch uh, high digits. Um, you do have to, this is just the backpack, it's not the LED display itself, which, you know, if you see in the next image, what the outline of it would be. Um, and uh, what's updated is that, so, you know, it's kind of, a, you know, we talked about how we did 300 revisions. Yeah. So one of the things I did is, first up, uh, it now has Step MQT ports, so it's yeah. plug and play, much easier to use. You don't have to solder in that header if you don't want to, and it can make wiring much easier. Second, I've added a little boost converter. So one of the things about the 1.2 inch LED segments is that the LEDs, there's two LEDs in series in each segment of the digit. And so you really need five volts for it to look good because it's two volts plus two volts. If you're at 3.3 volts, it's very dim. You really want five. And so um, historically I said, well, you can run it at three volt logic, but you'll also want five volt power. Well, I've updated now so you can run it at five volt or three volt any mix and match you want because built in is now a five volt little boost converter that will give you, you know, hundred milliamps, which is all you need to drive the segments at five volts cleanly, even if you're powering it from three volts. So great for use with STEM IQT because oftentimes you're plugging into a three volt microcontroller like an RP2040 or a SAMD21 or, you know, a Raspberry Pi or whatever, and it has three volt power and three volt logic. So um, a very big update, two, two big updates, but this one I think this will make it a lot easier to use. Next up. Okay, next up, uh, we've got a PAM 8302 breakout. Uh, we've had a breakout board version of this, like breadboard friendly version for a long time, but I wanted one that's plug and play that is pre-soldered, ready to go. You don't have to uh, do any soldering to get it working. You have terminal block on one end for the speaker, you have the JST for audio input on the other. And it's just a kind of nice, you know, three watt class D amp, low cost, simple. Uh, by default, it gives you about 14 dB of gain, but um, into a four ohm or eight ohm load. But if you look at the next photo, there is a little volume control knob. It's a potentiometer that you can twist to reduce the input from, you know, it can be up to three volts peak to peak input. You can reduce it down to reduce the gain so it doesn't you don't blow out your um setup so i have a little demo we have a demo i have a demo showing the kind of configuration because there's you know we have a lot of amplifiers and i'll explain why you'd want one or the other so oh man i just oh no it. sorry i was hitting i was about to hit autofocus and i hit power instead we're back okay <laughs> <laughs> how did we how did we survive? Hold on. It takes a second. For it does, but then then it's all ready. Okay, fine. You can zoom in if you want to. I know, well, I have, a, I have a lot of stuff going on. This overhead can boot, boot up faster if you accidentally yeah. turn it off. If you turn it off. Why would anyone do that? Yeah. I don't know. Okay. For fun. So what's nice here is that, um, again, it's solder-free. This is a prototype. It's green. The final version is blue or black. Um, but green, I don't know. Uh, sometimes I'm feeling green. Uh, it, inside, there's a, a JST 2 millimeter pH input with, and you can use, we have cables that are like a dollar a piece. Black is ground, red is power, three or five volts will work, and then white is signal in. And the signal is capacitively coupled here, so it can be DC reference. It doesn't matter. We'll AC couple it on the input, 
and then the potentiometer is the gain um and uh then there's the amplifier there's a couple of capacitors and then output you can uh is a bridge tag load to in this case it's a four ohm speaker and up to three watts so it's it's fairly loud and i don't want to get us into youtube trouble so i'm just going to quickly um yeah. turn it up stop it okay wait Right. YouTube police. YouTube police. Everyone's a cop now too. Everyone's just it's talk just like it's cop they're, they're just like I'm gonna turn you in because you're doing something. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, but this is great. Like for example, this is Circuit Python and it has three volt peak to peak output. But you know, I also tried this with line level output from my computer and it works great. You know, because you have enough gain. Um, and then you can use the uh, use any um, flathead screwdriver to adjust the gain and you know don't don't play copyright music ever um works with pretty much anything it's just straight analog audio in to class d amplifier out very simple but really great when you just have microcontroller audio pwm or pure dac output and you want to amplify to a speaker okay next up the start of the show besides you lady Ada, our community our team Entire stuff data for the community that keeps things going in all sorts of ways. Not the cops. That's <laughs> yeah, there's nice cops too, but I'm just saying, like, yeah. everyone needs to stop turning each other in and uh, let's all get together and uh, make it share stuff. Anyways, um, start of the show tonight, the product is. Da -da -da, it's the prop maker feather. So let's, I'll, I'll show this demo on the over. Okay. So we'll just go straight into it. So the Prop Maker Feather is the latest in our RP2040 all-in-one feather line. Um, this is because we had a lot of people who were making projects with our Prop Maker Feather Wing and the Feather M4. And the Feather M4 has been really hard to keep in stock because the CMD51 is still affected by the chip shortage somehow. Um, and people also had to solder together and there's two pieces and it, like they wanted better quality audio. And so I was like, ah, oh, you know, maybe I'll just make an all-in-one feather. Actually, I, you know, that's giving myself too credit. Uh, Dan Halbert said, why don't you make an all-in-one feather? And I was like, that's a good idea. So um, I did so. So what this has, I'll go to the next image, is on uh, the left-hand side, you've got your USB-C and your battery input and your RP2040 chip. So it's a dual-core 130 megahertz processor. So you can uh, do sensing, play back audio, do CircuitPython or MicroPython or Arduino with it. Um, there's a reset button, there's a bootloader button, and you can also use it as a user button. It's a, after it's booted, you can use it as an input. There's a Steva QT port, 8 megabytes of flash, so lots of space for storing audio files or um, sound fonts, whatever you want to call them, or animation instructions. There is an accelerometer kind of in the top right corner. It's a list 3 dh 3 3-axis accelerometer with tap detection, so really good for motion sensing. On the bottom right, there is an I2S Max 98357 3 watt digital amplifier. So this take, takes digital signal I2S from the RP2040. So it gives you really high quality audio output um, up to three watts. So it's good for, you know, uh, powering fairly large speakers uh, for props and robotics and animatronics. There's also a little servo port. We had a little space left over and I was like, well, what are we going to use it for? And I think Phil B was the one who was like, can you stick a servo connection there? I don't know. Somebody said so. And I was like, yeah, it's a good idea. So I did, so you can plug and play a servo inside. And then there's terminal blocks for the outputs. So you, the NeoPixels for a button input and for the speaker output, you've got these terminal blocks so you can really quickly wire up a project. And there's probably a lot of projects you can do with minimal soldering and you don't have to solder to the feather itself. You just use a terminal block. So let's go to yeah, uh, and the overhead. One thing I'll say is, uh, you know, a while ago, I think it was, a decade ago, I'm just like, you know, it'd be really cool if one day Disney did like Imagineer in a box to have the next generation of people who are doing like all the cool uh, animatronics and more. And like Disney's so gigantic now, it's like it'd probably be impossible to find anyone who could help make that happen. So I'm just going to call it that. It's like this is one of the things that you can do uh, video, uh, sorry, uh, audio. Um, you could do robotics. You could do lots of things uh, in a really compact package. And uh, make your own. This gets. This could put you on that path of uh, making like pretty intense. Yeah, I, I mean, I think with, with the prop maker feather wing, we learned a lot. Like it was a good thing, but I think I learned a lot. Like people really want i two s digital um, output. Sounds really good, and um, they want terminal blocks. They can plug and unplug stuff in a servo port. Um, so I didn't have the servo plugged in before, so it was, it was making a little bit mm. of noise. 
So let's uh, try this again. And this is signal. You can run uh, scripting languages on the. Yeah. Yeah, it's like it's pretty intense. Um, things it can do. Yeah, it can also run off of a battery, which is kind of nice. So I'm going to. How much flash is on it? This has eight megabytes of flash. Eight so eight megabytes. Lots of space for audio and more. So it runs off a battery here. Uh, this is the bun input. So one of the terminal pins is just like a GPIO. So in this case, you know, when I press it, the new pixels go. It's also playing audio, but um, you don't have to believe me. Uh, and then this is the servo output. So, you know, it's just slowly moving the servo back and forth. Um, but that's handy if you want to do um, projects where there's a little bit of motion involved. Maybe you want to, you know, move a little eyeball or move a head back and forth or... Um, uh, have something spinning, you know, you could have, yeah. um, there's continuous rotation servos as well. And uh, the NeoPixel output has a five volt level shifter. So you get nice clean NeoPixel output. And then the power to the NeoPixels and this servo and the audio amplifier can be turned on off instantaneously. So there's, there's a transistor that can turn off those external um, power outputs. And the reason you might want to do that is uh, for quiescent power usage, like the RP2040 is in a very low power chip, but still, you know, NeoPixels do draw current even if they're not lit. And so this would let you just completely kill all that power and mute the amplifier for sure. And then, um, you know, this boot button here, when I press it, you know, it turns this LED white. And then, of course, you can add more sensors and capability over the Stemma QT port. Just plug in vertically into it. Um, this one has a broken connector because it's mine, but uh, imagine it didn't have a crack in it. Plug in, um, you know, a gyroscope, you can plug in OLEDs, you can plug in um, more servo drivers, you can plug in, um, you know, an NFC, RFID reader, whatever you want into the I2C. And of course, you have all the header pins as well. So you have like 21 GPIO on top of that uh, for any kind of analog reading or digital control, can get to up to a TFT, what have you. It's like a regular feather. But I think a lot of it's built in. I kind of like that you may not need... Um, more circuitry or soldering to get most projects off the ground. Yeah. All right. And uh, that is new products of the week this week. New, 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 new.